25 colleges of the University of Mumbai out of 785 colleges in number are actually implemented this undergraduate program as BSc IT. Along with BSc IT, we also started BSc Computer Science and also BSc Biotechnology which did not take off that well as IT because IT syllabus was predominantly a complete syllable, syllabus revolving around IT subject. Only last year we were able to rectify that error and now our BSc Biotechnology and BSc Computer Science program, these are also complete by themselves right from the first semester. The students start getting an opportunity to understand these subjects from the core uh, of their heart. And therefore, when we are talking about 21st century world, it is not only globalization and it is not just a global village concept. We have to really take advantage of the technologies like IT, with which we can not only break the barriers of compartmentalization of faculty, but also reach the unreached population of the world, where hand-to-mouth experience or hand-to-mouth survival is the only motive of largest number of population in the world. They are still not in a position to meet the two ends every day and the average income of the societies is less than $50 a year where you cannot expect them to even get education. However, a country like India, if you compare with any country outside India, particularly in the Western world where the young generation wants to aspire to go and make their careers, should remember one thing that we are the only nation in the world which offers science programs at master's level in less than 300 euros or about 350 US dollars per year tuition fees as compared to at least 17,000 pounds <laughs> per annum if you go to Europe or about 20,000 US dollars per annum if you go to the United States. So it is not merely the difference between the amount that you pay but the quality of education that we offer is far better than those universities which boast as the best universities in the world because in the western world I have seen after traveling extensively throughout the world that 70% of the syllabus taught in those universities is a self-study whereas in our universities we have when we talk about face-to-face -face program we have 100% syllabus taught in our departments and those students who are talking about making careers abroad should remember that the entire knowledge base is in India. You complete your education, go abroad, spread your wings and get something, what we call it as wisdom and come back to your nation, serve this motherland, take care of your parents and serve this alma mater. I think if you are able to do that, this will be a true, nation, true service to our nation and what we talk and aspire that taking our nation to greater heights, the charity begins at home. And you have to understand that you have to feel proud and take pride in being student of this university or any university you may have studied. But we have to remember that we have to have a commitment to our nation first. With your permission, I may take about seven, eight minutes more. I'm sure I have already completed the time of that was given to me. But I did prepare something which I thought I should read as a uh, something which I would like to talk about your subject or the subject of this meeting which will have deliberations over the next two days. Respected delegates, the term big data has been coined to refer to the gargantuan bulk of data that cannot be dealt with the tradition, traditional data handling techniques. Big data is still a novel concept and in the literature that we study we would like to understand if you are going to understand this subject then we have to understand this in a palpable fashion. The concept with which it commences that is the subject itself along with its properties and approaches of dealing with this particular subject of big data analytics and cyber security. It is this subject which is influencing largely the IT industry like few technologies have done before. The massive data generated from sensor-enabled machines, mobile devices, cloud computing, social media, satellites help different organizations improve their decision making and take their business to another level. The concept of big data or the data itself absolutely has the potential 
to change the way governments, organizations, and academic institutions conduct business and make discoveries, and it's likely to change how everyone lives their day-to-day -day lives. That is what is actually mentioned by one of the corporate vice presidents of Microsoft named Susan Hosser. And therefore, it is understood that the data is the biggest thing to hit the industry since the PC was invented by Steve Jobs. As all of us are aware, everyday data is generated in such a rapid manner that traditional databases and other data storing systems will gradually give up in storing, retrieving and finding relationships among data. Big data technologies have addressed the problems related to this new big data revolution through the use of commodity hardware and distribution. Companies like Google, Yahoo, General Electric, Cornerstone, Microsoft, Kaggle, Facebook, Amazon that are investing a lot in big data research and projects. IDC estimates the value of big data market to be about 6.8 billion quoted in the year 2012 in dollars, which is growing almost 40% every year to about 17 billion US dollars, which it has touched in 2015. Wikipson's Jeb Kelly predicts that big data market will top about $50 billion in 2017 and the demand is so hot for the solutions that all companies are exploring big data strategies. Recently it was announced that Indian Prime Minister's office is using big data analytics to understand Indian citizens sentiments and ideas through crowdsourcing platform that is www.mygov.in and social media to get picture of common people's thoughts and opinions on government actions. Google is launching the Google, Google Cloud platform which provides de develop a range of products from simple websites to complex applications. It enables users to launch virtual machines, store huge amount of data online and plenty of other things. Basically, it will be a one-stop platform for cloud-based applications, online gaming, mobile applications and so on. All this required huge amount of data processing where big data plays an immense role in data processing. We are talking about big data analysis and related subjects, but our brain, which consists of more than 1 billion cells, it is still a mystery for human beings to understand how the function of the brain implies the storage and the capacity of human being to interpret the data over a period of time since the time he understands what the world is till the time he wants to express something. And all that data which is stored in these one billion cells or more is analyzed, articulated and comes out as a speech. For example, I'm talking to you. I'm talking about the process which is going on in my mind and the words are flowing, which somebody may feel that I have prepared myself, but the extempore speeches are not prepared. They are basically extempore. They come from the bottom of the heart. And that's where that big data and the analysis and the capacity of the brain to understand how to articulate your thoughts and express at the right time in the right place and also in the right manner is still a mystery for human beings to understand. And therefore, maybe a fraction of that, which we feel is a greater challenge in terms of big data analytics, we'll still have to understand the nature of the brain and its expression. And then you'll realize that today's challenges that we are facing technologically are much, much smaller than the understanding of psychological, physiological, and biological processes of human beings. The predictions from IDC, future scope of big data and analy analytics are, and I would just mention 10 points. Visual data discovery tools will be growing 2.5 times faster than the rest of the business intelligence market. By 2018, investing in this enabler of end user self-service will become a requirement of all enterprises. Over the next five years, spending on cloud-based big data and analytics solutions will grow three times faster than spending for on-promise solutions. Hybrid on-off premise developments will become a requirement. Storage of skilled staff will persist. In the US alone, there will be about 181,000 deep analytics roles in 2018 and five times that 
many positions requiring related skills in data management and interpretation. By 2017, unified data platform architecture will become the foundation of BDA strategy. The unification of this will occur across information management, analysis and search technology. Growth in applications incorporating advanced and predictive analytics including machine learning will accelerate in 2016. These applications will grow 65% faster than the applications without predictive functionality. 70% of large organizations already purchase external data and about 100% will do so by 2019. In parallel, more organizations will begin to monetize their data by selling them or providing value-added content. Seventh point is adaption of technology to continuously analyze streams of events will accelerate this year or later this year as it is applied to Internet of Things analytics which is expected to grow at a five-year compound annual growth rate of 30%. The eighth point is the decision management platforms will expand at CAGR of 60% through 2019 in response to the need for greater consistency in decision making and decision making processes which also are called as the decision making process knowledge retention. Ninth point is the rich media that is video, audio or image analytics will at least triple in later part of this year and emerge as the key driver for BDA technology investment. And the last point which I want to make is by 2018, half of all the consumers will interact with services based on cognitive computing on a regular basis. In conclusion, I just want to mention that analytics, no matter how advanced they are, does not remove the need for human insights. On the contrary, there is a compelling need for skilled people with the ability to understand data, think from the business point of view and come up with insights. For this very reason, technology professionals with analytic skills are finding themselves a big demand as business look to harness the power of big data. A professional with the analytical skills can master the ocean of big data and become a vital asset to any organization, boosting the business and their career. Dear delegates, my colleagues, Madam Shrivara Mangai and her fellow colleagues in the department, and one of our senior professors, as I mentioned, and my distinguished colleague from the university, Dr. S.C. Gupta, tell me that all of you are some of the most competent professionals who are working in the area of big data analytics and cyber security from its infancy stage until its current state. Hence, my taking a stock of the concepts of big data followed by the applications and the challenges faced by it, I think, is probably the situation where I would like to say that though I may not be an expert in this field, but I am aware of the future opportunities that could be harnessed in this field by one and all. I would like to just mention that this is going to be the best career move for all of those who want to make career in that. And it is not only the reasons for which it is going to be an opportunity for everybody, but the most important opportunities will be that there will be enormous number of choices in terms of job titles and type of analytics such as big data analytics business consultant, big data analytics architect, big data engineer, big data solution architect, big data analyst, analytics associate, business intelligence and analytics consultant, metrics and analytics specialist and so on. No single degree that you take in our academic area gives you so many opportunities of looking at different aspects of your application of knowledge and the enormous opportunities in terms of the positions that you can hold using just knowledge acquired in one particular degree. And therefore, to conclude, I would like to tell you what Peter Sountergaard, the senior vice president of Gartner Research famously stated, and I quote, information is the oil of the 21st century and analytics is the combustion engine. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind attention. Jai Hind.
it was it was indeed one of the most most inspiring speech that i have been privileged to hear a huge round of applause on my request for him please because it was so straight from the heart sir thank you so much it was a holistic speech and i couldn't stop writing and making notes of so much that he shared with us today about the industry and more importantly about the importance of learning if i may also quote uh, one of the famous authors elvin toffler who says that the illiterates of 21st century are only those who cannot learn unlearn and relearn on that note may i request ms uh, srivara mangai to please come and extend the word of thanks a round of applause for her please good morning one and all uh, it's my privilege from the department of it university of mumbai as well as from csi side on behalf of professor gupta to deliver the vote of thanks for today's morning function the inauguration session it is our privilege that we had been associated with csi in this amidst busy schedule 